Hi, this is Ed Gregory for PhotosInColor.com and today I'm going to show you how to create an amazing vintage film look in Lightroom. Theme tune! Wow! Wow! <laughs> okay, don't know what that was today, but it was something. So, people, it's kind of a cool thing right now to be creating kind of vintage film looks in Lightroom for your photos. And I'll be honest with you, I love it. I think it's amazing. So I'm gonna teach you a technique today, but before I do, remember this. Vintage films, there's so many of them out there, different types of film by different companies. Are they expired? Are they how they were in the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, whenever? Okay, so this is just a look a design, a type, but there are so many ways of doing this. But this is just my way that I think works pretty much every time. So let's jump into Lightroom. So today I'm gonna to be using this photograph here, little dog down at the bottom, so cute. And this here is Rosie White of Dance Lovely fame. She's amazing. So let's have a quick look at where to start. So with the image, this is what I would do. I would usually pull the highlights back and boost up the shadows, and then pull the whites back, and then lift up these blacks. Now essentially what this does is it creates a little bit of a faded feel, but not too much because we're only working within this. So again, let's look at the beginning, before, and the after. It's a great start, but we have a long way to go. So the next thing is vibrance. Usually what I would do here, you want to boost up the vibrance like so, but pull down the saturation, because you want it to be desaturated. But watch if you don't reduce the saturation. If you literally just pull back the saturation, okay, it kind of feels a bit dead. So you want to pull a little bit of that back, okay? Which there looks amazing. Now I'm going to come back to the tone curve in a minute. I'm just going to skip down here to the HSL because this one's really important for creating a feel. We want to change the colors of an image. Usually, okay, in, some, in an old vintage look, you want to pull down the saturation of everything, okay? But just blanket like this isn't going to work. What you want to do is change the amounts. Now, I actually have very specific ways of doing this, okay? Um, and it's usually creating a couple of lines like this. But again, you want to look at each one of your images and don't go too far. So I actually went too far with that one. That looks great. And then the next thing that you want to do is you definitely want to look at the actual hue because remember it's vintage film, it's chemicals. So the chemicals would affect colors differently. So again, you, you do want to pull this hue around. Now usually what I do is I pull the aqua back and the green back as well here. This is what I want to take it backwards. And then I go the opposite direction with the yellows and the oranges, like, uh, sorry, the orange definitely goes towards the red and the red up here, okay? So let's turn this on and off. So you can see the actual color of the image has now changed. And then in the luminance, essentially what I like to do is I'm gonna bring up the luminance of the reds, the oranges, and the yellows, and I'm gonna bring down the luminance of the blues and the greens, like so. So it creates kind of a line. That's what I would do anyway. But again, every image is different. This is just working here. Now let's look at the most important thing in the vintage film look, and that is the tone curve. Now essentially to make this work is you wanna crush the blacks. What that means is the blacks are no longer black, they go to gray. So you click on the middle here and literally you pull this up, okay? But you pull it up as high as you want. So if you watch, if I go all the way up here, it ruins the image. But if I just come, say, part way up here, straight away we've crushed these blacks. So let's look at this to here. And it's created this vintage kind of a feel. Now I, don't, I actually create a little bit more of a curve. You don't want it just to be a straight line, okay? Usually you wanna add this little bit of a curve so you're keeping some contrast. That looks great. Now we're gonna do the same thing but within the colors. So for this one, I definitely want to crush my blues. Now what that means is any blues that are in the shadows are actually going to be crushed even more than what I just did with the blacks, okay? So you can see here what the image is starting to look different. But if I don't put in the dot here, it actually pulls it all the way down. Now we're starting to come alive. And what I'm actually going to do is within the reds, I'm gonna pull all of the reds back from the middle. So I boost the reds like so. 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the green, sorry, back a hair. Watch this. Just a hair. She's kind of giving this split tony kind of a feel. So let's look at the before and let's look at the after. Now we're starting to get there, but there's still a few things that I like to do with this, okay? One of the main things that I like to do is I want to add kind of some kind of a, a haze to the image. So I take the, ra the gradient filter here, I double click effect to reset, and then I take the dehaze and I push down to this. So I'm actually gonna add haze and watch this. I'm just gonna paint this kind of across here. I'll see how it works. And then I might move it around a little bit like so. So it sees kind of actually adds on haze to the image as opposed to getting rid of the haze. haze. And therefore it's kind of like a bit of a flare feel to it. And what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna reduce the contrast and boost the brightness in that area too. Let's have this a little bit more coming across the image like so. So it's added this kind of a flare. I'm actually gonna bring back the saturation of that area. And then we'll come out of this. That's starting to look absolutely amazing. The other thing that I'm gonna do is add a little bit of yellow to this. I'm gonna warm it up just, but I'm gonna use the temperature tool to do that. So that to me is looking great. Now if I want to add a little bit of cross-processing, so that's essentially what, how chemicals use different chemicals to cross-process, is I, you do that inside split toning. And for this, I'm gonna add purple to my shadows, and I'm gonna add yellows to my um, highlights. Let's bring this in here, and I'm gonna pull it back towards my shadows a little bit. And I can slide this around to see the effect, and I can see it needs to be towards the pinky purples. So now let's look at the before, and look at the after. Dramatic difference. And now it really does have that vintage feel. And then the final thing to add to this, it is the grain, obviously. So let's zoom in on this image, okay? And we're gonna add some grain, actually. So I'm gonna lift up the grain here, and I'm gonna make it add the size. Now you can watch my tutorial on grain, but I'm gonna make it fairly large, but I don't want it to be too rough because it adds too much blur to it. So let me just come back here. Way too much on that. That to me, let's add let's boost the roughness actually. Yes, there you go. So this now has a real film grain added to it. So let's come out, let's go before and after. Let's zoom in and do the before and after. So let's just fill the screen here, okay? The before here looks great, but look at the after. Now it's got this beautiful vintage feel to the image. So that there is how I would use Lightroom to create a vintage film look, okay? If you like what I did, give me a thumbs up. Maybe you do it differently. Still give me a thumbs up and please subscribe because my channel is growing and it's getting really exciting and subscribing definitely helps. So my name's Ed Gregory for photosincolor.com. Theme tune. Awesome.